Our esteemed speaker this evening has over 15 years of experience, of which the last nine have been as co-founder and CTO of Clusterpoint. Please welcome Jurgis Horus. Reduce, 
by uh, using uh, two methods. Uh, one is the map, which uh, processes key value for first, and then makes set of intermediates, and it was reduced, we reduce those intermediates in the final result. So that became sort of uh, uh, de facto standard uh, by the new company startups which started to use and implement uh, this idea in, in their products. And from those two uh, white papers uh, sprang up uh, new companies implementing uh, technologies in two uh, directions. So well, one direction was key value data stores, and another one well, was uh, MapReduce. In old days, uh, the most popular MapReduce distributed computing uh, management uh, is done by Hadoop, and uh, yeah, and the key value stores, we are a couple of them, and uh, from key value data stores then involve uh, involved new database like document oriented databases, graph databases, white column databases, uh, and etc. So that was a great, uh, I think, uh, a turning point uh, in data management uh, area. And uh, yeah, it seemed uh, very promising. So the question is that uh, background use is like uh, batch oriented and uh, it can uh, uh, it can kind of uh, as it is, it is a, by essence it's a batch it can perform, can perform uh, very well if we speak about the real time and key value stores uh, is the the way how we can effectively store a big amount of data but we actually can't do a lot uh, on the data so idea is that we could merge those two uh, things together to make one complete platform where we can effectively store a very large amount of data and do the pr processing as we do in, uh, in MapReduce. So then comes cluster point uh, here, and in cluster point we build the spaceships, right? So maybe not the spaceships which will uh, uh, fly to Mars, but at least solve some data management problems. So actually, what is cluster point? Cluster point is no SQL database. Uh, document oriented, uh, as you already answered uh, the questions, uh, it's, uh, it can support uh, uh, JSON, XML, or binary uh, data. It's distributed, sharded, uh, replicated. It's schemeless uh, and can can uh, contain uh, not contain, but uh, it supports uh, transaction as it compliant transactions. And it's also called an name. Uh, it means that this uh, software can run both on the private cloud or in the public cloud. So the cluster point we have our own cloud where you can sign up and try it out. And uh, this version 4, we need to use a new uh, distributed computing engine. This is the very recent news. We, we launched this version uh, a couple of weeks ago. So it's all all of all, this version is very fresh and uh, new. Yeah, when we started to think about uh, the computing, data computing in our database, we uh, were considering uh, what kind of query language would be most suitable for describing distributed uh, tasks. And then we came to this uh, nice uh, picture and on the left side, there is like a SQL statement uh, which does some aggregation, filtering, and stuff. And then on the right side, we have the same functionality but written uh, in MapReduce uh, manner, right? And we, we saw that there is something wrong with, with the right side, and we like this uh, this uh, left side. So we decided that we need to think how we can uh, use existing technologies to create a new. Uh, new technology which will form into the new uh, query language. So, yeah, here here we are. Uh, we have a query language you have never you have never heard of, but you are already an expert. So it, it's kind of uh, weird, but it's true. Uh, so.
So by technology top in 2015 by Stack Overflow, uh, JavaScript and SQL is most uh, popular uh, technologies where experts are exchanging uh, with, uh, with the questions and an answers. So that was quite, uh, we were spot on when we saw that those two technologies can merge together and work quite well. So that's why we have married two technologies together, J JavaScript and SQL, and uh, decided to make new query language and we call it uh, JSSQL. So let's let's check, check it out what's what's good about SQL and what's good about JavaScript. So in SQL, it's quite flexible to express queries because uh, uh, language as is itself is made for querying the data. Uh, it's also uh, it could be possible to execute it in parallel, uh, which also uh, was like a, like a pro for for us because uh, we have distributed system and we have to have language which express some uh, queries which could be executed in parallel. The bad thing is that it's static, so uh, the, uh, the data model is rich and uh, it, uh, it it doesn't allow uh, to add fields on demand. Hard to find expressions and uh, bad with customer things. Okay, there is. Uh, JavaScript, it's obvious that it's quite hard to express queries because this is programming language, not a query language for the database. Uh, quite difficult to execute in parallel because JavaScript as such has no threads and uh, can't uh, make like forks to make new processes. So uh, this is kind of not very really good for JavaScript as a language. Uh, the good thing about JavaScript and maybe in, a, uh, in the same it's not very good, it's, uh, it's quite dynamic. So we have like a joke uh, in uh, our core team um, and joking about this dynamic behavior is that you can follow uh, on the keyboard and it will produce valid JavaScript. So uh, about this uh, dynamic things of JavaScript like doesn't have like types and you can add uh, properties to, to objects uh, on demand. So that kind of thing, like uh, uh, we, we like that because in uh, schemeless distributed NoSQL database, uh, this capability uh, to add some new fields on demand is quite natural and convenient. Yeah, in JavaScript, so it's easy to define expressions, as this is like a full-fledged programming language, and also it's uh, possible and obvious to 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 write your own functions, procedures, and programs. So yeah, in result we, we got uh, that we have this all flexibility from uh, of both uh, technologies uh, and and that makes uh, this language uh, quite quite uh, quite good. Speaking about the JavaScript, so uh, we used uh, V8 as a JavaScript engine. Why we choose that? Uh, because it's uh, it's quite known by by performance, and actually initially it was created uh, to to run JavaScript into the browsers on the, on, a, on a client side, right? Uh, but when this technology moved on, uh, then also server side uh, uh, companies who pro who provides uh, server side products also integrated that and that was quite successful. So for example, uh, Node.js, MongoDB uh, runs V8 and also uh, Google BigQuery uh, user defined functions also can be uh, written in, in JavaScript. So that's, that was uh, kind of benefit for us when we uh, tried to choose from, uh, from different uh, JavaScript engines. And yeah, and what, what, what's different about V8 is it's because it generates from JavaScript machine code. So uh, when, you, when it compiles, it uses just-in-time compiler and goes through uh, multiple optimizations, it generates machine, uh, machine code, which is actually, uh, you can run it uh, or just 
to tangent runs on, on processors. So it's actually uh, assembly, uh, assembly code which is done on processors and it's, it's really fast. Previously, when we when we talked about JavaScript, we thought that yeah, JavaScript yeah, well, it, it, it's, it's kind of cliche about JavaScript. This slow language, right? About because it's dynamic and, and all and stuff. So, but but when we saw this uh, V8 implementation, so that was quite promising. Uh, yeah, and the following two slides I took from Google I/O uh, presentation when they first uh, shown uh, this V8 engine. So they defined the problem of, uh, of how to compute uh, the 25,000 prime. And uh, here is the uh, algorithm, how to calculate that. So it's pretty straightforward. And then I showed uh, the code on the uh, left side is C++ code. Uh, on the right side, it's the same uh, functionality same implementation but in JavaScript. And it turned out that uh, JavaScript uh, compiled with V8 is just 17% slower than optimized C++, C++ code. So that, that was quite uh, impressive. Uh, of course, uh, it's not always true uh, for every JavaScript that you run on V8. Uh, so maybe this example was kind of uh, fitted to show this performance. Uh, but it, it, I can say that it performs quite well. From the integration point of view, uh, that was quite a good fit for us because uh, we code uh, <coughs> on database in C++. So V8 was like C, uh, as a library, C++ library, so this integration was quite natural. It implements ECOScript uh, fixed version uh, I think in, uh, in June uh, this year, uh, the new version 6, ECMAScript 6 uh, edition was, was uh, also accepted by, by industry, uh, by standard. Uh, but yeah, VA runs 5th uh, edition. So in 6th edition, there's lots of new nice features in JavaScript, like classes, subclasses, more object-oriented than the previous. And, uh, how we integrated that uh, into our database. Um, the interface, how we speak with the uh, JavaScript engine is through the accessors and interceptors. So if you want to access some uh, variable uh, from JavaScript, uh, JavaScript engine calls uh, accessor. So if you, if you find and say that I want on the variable by name, I don't know, uh, car, you get some value, call C++ function to get the value uh, for this particular JavaScript variable. And this uh, this is called uh, binding in JavaScript uh, V8, and we use that interface to uh, pass the data from the from database into the JavaScript engine. Uh, yeah, and here is an example how we do uh, uh, the, uh, the binding of values from database into JavaScript how uh, other uh, vendors do. So we use the index uh, to store, like uh, for each document, uh, we store index uh, which contains the uh, field name and, uh, and the value. And when we access, in this case, variable name, it actually calls accessor, and accessor calls directly to the index to get the value of this particular variable or the field into in, in our JSON, for example. So it's, it's very, very fast, so we can get this in constant time. So other database go that way that if you want to get some field in from particular record, they read the whole record from the database, from the repository, deserializes it, pass it to the JavaScript context, and then execute JavaScript. And it's quite, quite slow because this process takes quite a lot of time because not always the data stored into the uh, repository or in uh, database storage uh, has the same format that accepts JavaScript extension. Mm -hmm. So in that, we gained uh, a lot of performance uh, when executing JavaScript on, on, a, on a server side. 
So another thing is that we do this uh, lazy field binding, which, uh, which means that we bind the fields, which means we make this ancestor only when necessary. So in, if, if you have a, a record of five fields and you have access from uh, the statement just one, so we, we bind just the one, and the other fields are not binded, so we uh, do some uh, efficiency uh, there as well. And as we have distributed environment, we can get, uh, we, we execute actually JavaScript in parallel, which means uh, each shard in uh, our distributed database executes execute, execute the code in, in parallel. Oops. Yeah, so now we are, uh, uh, I can tell about uh, JSSQL, about the language, about the language structure, and, and a few examples. So yeah, as, as the name of the language already said about themself, itself, it's uh, based on CQL uh, and in uh, various clauses of, of, of CQL, you can call an arbitrary JavaScript code. So uh, and in the next versions of, of our software, we also support joins and uh, more. You, you could do. You will. You will. You could do more about uh, uh, manage or process data when you have the uh, hierarchies uh, in, in the documents. So we'll show uh, it a bit later. So this is the simplest query you can run in uh, in cluster point. So at the first glance, it's just like CQL, and actually it is CQL. So simplest queries is just the same as, as, it, as they are in, in SQL. And here is like uh, insert statement. So here is an example how you can populate the data into the database. So it's very similar to SQL, but we can uh, put uh, JSON or XML value here. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple uh, to do that. And of course, we also uh, oops, uh, and also for uh, folks who love uh, SQL and want flat structures, uh, this, this uh, standard SQL syntax is available as well. Uh, yeah, and this is update statement. So it's quite quite interesting that uh, on the set clause, you actually can run your own JavaScript. So you're not like setting uh, just a few fields, just changing some values, and that's it. You actually can do whatever you want, uh, making some loops, uh, if statements, and uh, etc. So in this case, we are just checking if uh, packaging type. <laughs> and packaging type is part of the document. So if we have a document field like a packaging, and then we have a child, which have a child field type. And we compare this box, then we change the ratio, and then we make the new field packaging volume where we, calcul we calculate uh, the volume of this packaging. So uh, that kind of things you can you can do, and uh, due to fa fact that you can uh, make new uh, properties to your objects at runtime, so it also will populate database with new fields yeah in runtime. And this is like a uh, nice thing uh, about the uh, NoSQL and schemeless approach. Matching. So uh, that pretty shows that we can actually inject JavaScript also in select clause. Uh, and this uh, word clause also is pure, pure JavaScript. So here we, what we do, we just replace in, uh, replacing uh, the value of the field name, place the bike is bicycle, check availability, uh, and order by some some map there. And of course, we can do also uh, we can define also the functions. So before we run uh, and declare a SQL statement, we can define also the function and then call it from a query clause or select clause. Whatever. In, in this case, we are, we are calculating uh, discount for a specific category, and then use this value and then multiply. 
by the price and do some filtering by some specific value. So it's quite quite useful when you want to uh, put some some logic, and this logic it gets uh, uh, it gets executed on on each chart uh, in a in a cluster of database. Price buckets. So it's also a nice feature uh, which we sometimes need to program uh, in uh, internet shops, for example. Uh, so price bucket is like uh, the buckets of price ranges where my matched products fit in. So if you would like to program it in uh, other technologies, it could be, could be quite challenging. So by using uh, JSSQL, it's, it's quite straight, it's straightforward. We define the function which will return the bucket for a specific price. Here we, <coughs> here we define uh, uh, the ranges, the upper bound, lower bound for each bucket. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight buckets where we want to uh, fit our, our, our uh, results. And what we do, we return string which will be made from the lower and upper bound of this particular price bucket. And if it's above, then we make a bucket which is called above and the last uh, value of, of upper bound of the bucket. So when we we'll do the select, uh, what we do, we group by price bucket. So this value actually was dynamically generated on the, uh, on the runtime. And in the result, we will get string, which is like, uh, particular uh, price bucket and the count. So in that way we can also uh, do some dynamic grouping uh, um, using user-defined uh, functions. Okay, then uh, it's also, uh, this example will show how to uh, work with uh, nested documents and what we can do with nested documents uh, using JSSQL. Uh, in, that, in this particular example, we'll uh, kind of simulate uh, um, e sharp and uh, and all orders that was made uh, by by users. So each document represents uh, items he or she bought uh, in e shop. For example, it's like uh, one one item, second item, and then we have more items in the list. And what we want to know is uh, what is the total amount of orders? What is their average uh, minimum and maximum? And we can achieve them by defining function which iterates through all items in our uh, uh, baskets or orders and sum uh, those things up. So we can sum each each user items together and then sum sum all of them because a fine average, fine minimum, uh, and fine, uh, fine maximum. So that's, that's also uh, possible to iterate through each hierarchical object uh, and write your functions to do that. This is a classic example of, uh, of method use task you can find on, on tutorials about that. Uh, or, and that represents uh, the case when you need to uh, find all words uh, and their occurrences in, in, into the text. So what we do here is we split the string, which is descriptions. Here we have example of, of one record. Record. So here we split this uh, field by white spaces. Uh, so we get an array of each word. And by grouping, grouping uh, is done for each word found in this array. So in select statement, we uh, refer to this particular group member as a group key, as a word, and count. And in result, we can get uh, all unique words and their occurrences into, into the data set. So it, 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 it's not so easy to write the uh, same, uh, same code using uh, MapReduce, but this is quite short and convenient way how to do that. Database also uh, 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 have capabilities of geospatial data retrieval and full text search as well. 
as we actually uh, started cluster point as voltage search engine. So we are quite strong uh, in that as well. And we kept this uh, uh, voltage search engine into the database. And that, that, that's why we have this uh, uh, functionality built in uh, into the database. So we can, uh, we, we created a new uh, function for each object, which, which is called contains, which actually uh, uh, address is not address, but uh, uses the voltage search index to, to retrieve the data. And uh, also, uh, there is functions to calculate distance from, uh, from one point uh, to another. So in that case, we define the starting point where we want to retrieve all uh, data, uh, all records that contain statue in name, and order those data by distance. So here we use this reference point. Here we define where our coordinates uh, are located in object. So using that kind of functionality, you, you can create applications where you need some uh, geospatial fun functionality, like the, uh, the nearest, or you need to uh, make some uh, queries against polygons or circles. So you can combine this functionality into the queries and get quite rich functionality. Yeah, and that, uh, speaking about the next version, uh, we are going to uh, add some more uh, data processing for nested documents. For example, here we have the parent object. Here is, we have like, this is like a parent object that uh, contains two fields, and then we have like an array of sub-documents, or um, yeah, in, in JSON, there's not like sub-documents, but just an array. Uh, of objects, and in case we want to uh, insert that kind of object, we just call insert into product, where we specify a uh, primary key and the value. In case we want to add new items to inventory here, we add, we insert uh, in the product this particular ID and say that we want to add to uh, sub collection and add an item, and that way we, we get structure like that. In all cases, uh, uh, you get this object as, as one one piece, uh, but we we thought that, that it's quite problematic to to work with the uh, sub collections or sub documents separately. So that's why we introduced the term of uh, sub collections which is like, uh, for each document, we, you have a sub-collection to work with. And how we look from the query perspective, if we use this product, which is like a main uh, or upper level uh, of, of, of objects into the database, so we can uh, select price and inventory. So if we skip back, so price is from the upper level, and inventory is from contains all the locations where a particular product uh, is, loca is, lo is, lo is located. <coughs> so here we select price and all inventory items. So we'll, we will we'll get those two fields, uh, two properties from, uh, from, from the database. In case we want to work with inventory, so we also can make the queries to inventory, which is like sub-collection, sub and then refer to the parent using super uh, function. And therefore, uh, in this query result, we will get not the parent objects, but the child objects. So in that sense, it's quite similar to a uh, table structure uh, into relational data model. Well, when, when we do, uh, um, when we split uh, uh, this relation in, uh, in, uh, in separate table, the refer is foreign key. Here we do uh, implicitly. We we do not. Uh, we don't need to uh, separate this in different like a database or different table. What we do, we just introduce uh, sub collections and allow to operate them separately. And yes, and joins is also a quite a requested feature from our customers, but we, we know that, uh, as I said on the very beginning, that
that uh, I mean, the relational model joints doesn't scale well. So uh, we know that, and uh, in case you want to make the joints between two super large uh, data sets, it, it will be quite problematic. But in some cases, it, it could work quite well. So from syntax perspective, uh, here we define just two product, uh, two uh, uh, tables or two collections, product and order. And in order, we, we set the foreign key, like we do in a in relational data model. And when we want to uh, do the join between those two collections, we do not specify uh, how we can how we would join them by specifying in where, where clause. We uh, we define that when we access the value. In that case, we are uh, selecting uh, from order uh, table or order collection here, and say that we want to deliver the address, and we want a price from product where product key is defined in the order here. So in that way, we access uh, by foreign key the parent or not the parent or uh, related table and get the value necessary. And do the same in where, where, uh, where clause where we say that we want all delivery addresses and prices where the product price is uh, be, uh, larger than 20. So that that's, that's, uh, will be available in, in next, uh, next release of our database. And I think uh, when we get to that, uh, this data model or approach how we work with the data will be more complete and useful uh, when, uh, when programming different kind of applications. Okay, so it's not perfect and we we'll, won't solve any problem um, which can, could, can, could be solved with uh, SQL, but please, it's, it's towards to that and we are working hard to uh, get uh, nearly to the same functionality that the relational database does. Speaking about uh, API, uh, currently we do support not only REST API, so uh, but more API is coming soon. So we are working uh, to implement uh, native uh, programming language drivers for PHP, Node.js, .NET, Java. Uh, this is our our plan, and we hope uh, the community will, will help us to to drive those APIs. Uh, and make them uh, better. Here, there are just example how to do uh, query to our cloud uh, database using uh, simple Ajax query from browser. So you can see that you can start working with the database just from your browser. You don't need uh, you don't need actually uh, middleware or application server. So you, so you can uh, work with the database directly from uh, from your client from your browser. But okay, it's it's also possible to do that from any programming language because every programming language nowadays support uh, uh, communications over HTTP uh, and sending and receiving uh, uh, re 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 request and response from from uh, from uh, web servers. <coughs> so it's pretty 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 simple uh, to do that. Uh, yes, and that's pretty much uh, what uh, I wanted to, to say uh, today. And uh, yeah, uh, we have the new social uh, thing released last week about uh, uh, making, uh, making uh, inviting your friends to use Passport database. You can uh, earn extra storage bonuses uh, if you invite friends using uh, our call account. And also, we will uh, we will run a raffle at the end of uh, December, where we will play. We will uh, we'll, we'll give one item pro <coughs> with this nice pen or stylus. Uh, I'm not sure what the correct name for that. This item is not released, I think, but in December it will. So one will be lucky, uh, and we'll get the item pro. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. And We are going to continue with Q&A in a moment, but we have here uh, a Boz containing business cards. We need to pass this around one more time. Uh, please, everybody, put your business card in there. When you put in your
your business card, you have a chance to win. A brand new Apple Watch, uh, as well as you will get a free registration for Cluster Point Database. So, uh, please put your um, business card in the box, and let's take the first questions. Oh, and by the way, before we continue, all those shirts that you just saw there, let's pull them out. We're going to give those away at the same time as you do with one. So everyone's going to leave with a shirt. Presumably there's plenty there. And uh, let's take first question. question. Yes. How much of this is open source and how much is for private? Um, it's, uh, currently it's not open source. Uh, it's proprietary, but it's free. I mean, uh, the software is free for, for download, so you can install it on your private cloud or, or on your your PC, um, but most likely it's going to be open source software. Simple question number one. Yeah. Um, the expression this is for your GSP there. Yes. Yeah. So you, and you know which fields in the document you have specifically for that? Uh, yes. Or do they have to be lab on? Uh, so I mean, I have, see. yeah. Uh, so you need to specify that when uh, on the structure when you define it. You can. So actually, what the uh, classifier does is also detects the values and tries to uh, optimize the indexation. So it, it, it assigns for each field separate indexing. So actually, you don't need to put that explicitly, but if you want, you can override. In case you, you, you know that that field contain, will, will contain uh, latitude and longitude, you put specific kind of property. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you, you put the, uh, uh, this index on configuration, right? And database will then uh, use index to, to, to run this geospatial uh, queries. And also we have like latitude longitude, this is you know, like GPS coordinate system, and there's also another coordinate system like on plane, where you have now these square things, you have just the uh, flat condition. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, next question. You were talking about client to directly to talk to the database through this. Yeah. And then you were saying, I, I do not need a middle tier for it. For it right? yeah. So where would I really build my authentication there? Yeah, so in case of this uh, uh, example about uh, querying database from browser, it's, it's, maybe it's not so useful in production. It's more about some demo projects or when you start to work with that. But if you, if you are kind of serious about your applications and security, definitely you will have to make uh, your middle a middleware where you implement this authentication and authorization because in that case you're kind of exposing your credentials to the end customers or in HTML which we can see uh, see everyone uh, so in that in that respect you are you are you're absolutely right so you, you have to make this middleware to make this authentication and in the last example you were showing you did not have a uh, you know join as you showed before, right? You know, you had products and items. Yeah. I didn't see, can we, can we go to that slide if possible? Yeah. Oops. I need to start it again. Oops. Uh, we'll be back after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
uh, you can't, as uh, this kind of syntax notation here is the product, and if you have like an array here, is it product sure, key? The product would be an array inside of the order itself. Okay, I see. But it doesn't appear to be a join because if you look at the word condition, it's predicated only on the product. It's also that key. <laughs> it doesn't seem to join anything with delivery address, right? Uh, but it, it's kind of it, implicitly, it will join. Implicit. It's an implicit join. Yeah. You don't explicitly have to do the yeah. join. It'll do it it for you. Traditionally, I think where class was at. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a valid point here uh, about this ambiguity, about uh, if, this, uh, if there is a field into order, which has a, which, which is an, which is an array, right? <laughs> right. then uh, uh, most, most likely it, it, will, uh, it will yield to some exception here. Uh, but as I said, this is not present currently on, on, on at all, but this is uh, going to be the next version. So uh, I get, uh, we will we'll think about this and uh, there will be a solution how to address this the thing. But the idea conceptually is that uh, those, those joints will be uh, defined implicitly, not explicitly. That's one of the topics. Well, yeah. Um, are you thinking about joints that would, in MapReduce terms, not be more than one iteration? We can say way to achieve this from MapReduce is you can have both keys, a multi key sort of thing, sort by key, group by, and do the, the final like where files at the end, right? What I would expect would be that maybe you want some other MapReduce process, that would be a full join in uh, reality. So, so you have kind of intermediate results which we well, you do. Uh, what you've got here is one round, round, one round of MapReduce yeah. kind of across two tables. Cool. Okay. Okay. Thanks, that works, that's useful. Yeah. Um, doing it then again on the results. Okay. So uh, then uh, we are going to uh, make a functionality where you can insert, insert some uh, results into another collection and then run uh, processing on that the new collections. So that's the way how we uh, uh, kind of see that kind of thing. That will achieve joints. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, before we go on to the next question, does anybody want to put their card in that hasn't done it yet? Okay, one last question and we're giving away an iWatch. iWatch, Apple Watch, oh. same difference. <laughs> uh, next question, please. Yes. Uh, VA and garbage collection and aging and all the stuff that you deal with a lot of data. How do you deal with all those issues of, say, returning a million rows or returning thousands of rows? How, how is that? Do you get pauses? Do you see the pauses? Do you have a paging mechanism that we only ask for? You know, like typical SQL limits and row nums and things like that. Is that something that we push down to the engine, or is that something we? How do we deal with? Because typically we deal with a lot of data, right? And, and you don't want to return it all in one swoop. So like, how, how do I deal with it here? Yeah. So uh, in that case, yeah, we do support uh, this pagination uh, of data. So internally, uh, when we do the when we do the query, we actually not kind of. Uh, grabbing the whole data into the memory doing some stuff. So uh, uh, in case you are kind of specifying if you want to get like first hundred or second hundred, we keep only those uh, what you want to get from into the memory using priority queues, uh, not priority queues, but priority heap so we can sort them if necessary and sort only the part of that. Uh, in case you want to get the whole uh, documents, <coughs> not of, yeah, whole objects, which uh, match some query, then we do internal uh, push cursors or iterators. So we, 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 we do not keep all in memory, we just, uh, for the query, save uh, all matching IDs in the memory, if it if it's fits in memory, if not on the on a disk on an SSD. And then when you page through the results, we just grab the uh, relevant part of this uh, iterator and return just the part of that. So this, this dot iteration uh, is done on the server side. Okay. Well, we can take one more. Because you mentioned another thing, you, you implemented with cursors internally. Yeah. And then that you're giving uh, acid guarantees. Mm -hmm. okay. So don't, don't you run into troubles trying to do those two things? Because if you have cursors, mm -hmm. you can run into some sort of updates uh, for one of the rest of the report. Mm -hmm. um, actually, not because of uh, uh, nature how we implement a transaction. So we use uh, the so-called multi-version concurrency control and by using this snapshot isolation, which means that we fix uh, the view on the world when you issue the query, right? You freeze the view. And, if, and then we freeze these results and do that, that particular part. And we don't care if some modification 
notification from later on. So that's how we deal with that. I mean, you guys will be here for one-on-one -on -one questions right after the raffle and then giving away all the rest of the shirts. Uh, thank you very much, Jurgis Horace.